Hello, hello, and welcome to Connect In. Connect In is a weekly conversation about why it's important to get out of your head and back into your heart. Because here's the truth. When we are out of our twirly head, that is telling us all kinds of BS sometimes and lies and trying to distract us from what is important, we can't follow our truth. We can't kind of live the life that is a heart-centered life. So when we get out of our head and back into our body, we can live a heart-centered life. We can live a life that is essential for our soul's life, for our living, for our deep happiness. Now, our mind is super useful for a lot of things, but I don't know if you've ever noticed that sometimes when you are trying, trying, that's a mind word, right? But when you're trying to make a decision, and I'm not necessarily talking about should I wear this or that, but like bigger decisions. Should I go for this job? Should I date this person? Should I buy this house or rent this apartment or create amazing change in my life? Right? We all have that experience. We're inside ourselves. We're like, yes, yes, yes. I really, really want to do that. And then sometimes, Mm, you're like, well, I don't know about this. Is this really a good idea? I'm not really sure I want to do this. Are you really sure? You know, it's like when we start in that chatter, when we start in that mind chatter where we can't make decisions, chances are, well, there's a couple things that I think are happening. One is you're in a growth spurt. A big, major, life-changing growth spurt. And when you are in a big, major, life-changing growth spurt, you are, you are on a precipice of change, right? That is when your inner critic or your head is going to go, whoa, wait, things are just fine the way they are. And, you know, in your heart, you know they're not. And so listening to our heart, coming into our body, out of our head, into our body, and listening to our heart, or as I like to call it, your heart's yes, is essential, completely essential for you to grow, to evolve, to be your brightest, best self. And you do that by listening to your heart's yes, right? And so, I'm, you know, that whole conversation was really about some big growth changes, some big um, shifts in your life. But what about those moments where we just don't know how to read the situation? So here's an example. I love farmer's markets, and that is over the pandemic, that's one of the things that I missed most in the summer. Um, yeah, there was, tr trust me, there were tons of things that I missed. But what I missed most was kind of going out and being in the celebration of abundance, of craftspersons, of artists, of food, of all kinds of things. Like, there's just a carefree feeling and a sense of community that I notice in um, farmer's markets. And, you know, I, I like maybe the rest of us are having an inkling now, and I'm an introvert. So, I, you know, it's taken me 18 months to kind of have an inkling to want to really get out. But I've been like, huh, what would it be like to go to a concert or or go out to dinner with a bunch of friends and you know it's like honestly what happens it's like my mind automatically starts navigating what it would be like to navigate the crowds the people the virus the potential virus you know i am vaccinated but all of that 
is still rolling in my head. So when I went to this farmer's market the other day, I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. And my dog Luna was with me. And she, you could tell that she too, I thought, was super excited. There were all kinds of dogs there. And she was saying hi to everybody, hi to everybody. And, and I found myself after about three minutes of looking for my mask, I wanted to put my mask on. And I realized I didn't want to put my mask on because I was afraid of the virus because there were a, there was enough space around me and we were outside. But I realized the mask over the years is really this really, um, it's a level of protection. And then I suddenly realized that the excitement that my pup was showing was um, also a little bit of anxiety or, or, or overwhelm for her as well because then she started yawning. And you know, when dogs keep yawning and keep yawning, they're stressed. They're they're just trying to like discharge stress. <laughs> if only yawning could help us all discharge some stress. But anyway, so um, I was like, Wah! and I didn't want to leave the farmer's market. I definitely wanted to look at the craftspersons there. So I stepped off to the side and um, you know, Luna and I just, went on the, excuse me, on the grass for a little while and I was petting her and I was saying to myself, okay, it's okay. Yes, it's overwhelming. Yes, I want it to kind of expand out. But in that crowd, I was like, oh no, maybe I just want to contract. I mean, I mean, I think for all of us, all we can do is treat ourselves with unbelievable gentleness. You know, just this is how I am right now. This is how you are feeling right now. This is overwhelming. This is exciting. I just want to curl up in my bed. I'm lonely. You know, I want, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, it goes all over the place. And, and, and all you could do is honor yourself. So how do you know how to navigate yourself in all this change, in all this kerfuffle. And for me, it really is, um, how I understand it, is about coming out of the head. The head is like, you know, and you know, there's, there's a parts of it that's saying warning, 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 but some of it's a little outdated. And some of it is so subconscious and stuck in our, um, implicit memory or childhood uh, pre-verbal memory, um, sometimes we just don't even know what is the stop, right? In this case, I kind of had a feeling what it was. But to get out of our head and back into our heart, when we're in our heart, we can navigate what is the right thing for us to do. And you all, we all, we all have these experiences. It's like when you, there is, when you have a full body, yes, like, yes, I want to do that. Yes. Right. Life just flows. Like things just open up. Possibilities show up. You know, we call them synchronicities. We call them lucky breaks. We call them all those things, but really we are in line with our heart. We are following our hearts, yes. Versus those moments where you just feel like you are pushing a boulder up a hill every day. Oh my God, I have to go to this job. I have to go and meet these people, whatever it is. Oh, oh, oh. Like when you feel like you're pushing a boulder up a hill, and I'm not talking about the momentary 30 second boulder or 30 minute boulder. I'm talking about when life feels like you are pushing a boulder up a hill. You are in the realm of your head, your saboteur or your inner critic. Right? When you are in the sense of pushing a boulder up the hill, you are making things happen. Like, I am going to go through this thing that I'm afraid of, or I am just going to make it happen. 
where I have to make it happen, regardless of what um, other kind of advice you're getting, you just go for it. And that may be good for a while, but then, you know, at a certain point, you're like, well, maybe this wasn't the right thing for me. So just to recap in this moment, right? When you are following your mind, there is a lot of doing, making things happening, right? You're pushing the boulder up the hill. When you are out of your head and into the wisdom and guidance of your body and heart, your heart's yes, there is flow. There is a sense of allowing allowing space for you to become all that you can be. In that state of your mind, when you're in that push, 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 you know, that one minute can feel like forever. There's this joke I saw on social media once, what, what's longer, a microwave minute or a minute on a treadmill? Right? You know those minutes, it's like, how could it only be 10 seconds that passed or 30 seconds or whatever? But when you are out for a walk and you're out there to just enjoy yourself, that one minute can feel like an hour or a day. Right? One is an example of following your mind right? That making something happen. I got to do something instead of I would love to do something. That allowing that flow, that timelessness of being in your body and your heart is how we should go through life. That feeling is what I call living a heart-centered life. So in five element acupuncture, which I've been practicing for almost 30 years, um, there is a, a meridian or um, yeah, a meridian called the heart protector. And the heart protector, the heart protector's role is to do exactly that. In Western medicine, it's sometimes called the pericardium. But what it does in five element acupuncture or in um, acupuncture theory, is it allows you to kind of go hi hello like opening yourself up to the possibilities opening up yourself to the world around you opening up yourself to a new relationship i mean you know what this is like sometimes it's like hi you know right as soon as we um were able to meet people again did you feel like you were like hi hello even though we we're all masked and gloves and where I was, it was still cold. So I had hats. The only thing you saw were my eyes and it was like, hello, hello, hello. But then, you know, as you get to know somebody, a new friend, a new lover, whatever that is, there's this trust that happens, right? There's a trust that is coming from your body and your heart that is regulated by this meridian called the heart protector. So think way back when, way back before uh, the pandemic. We somehow got trained that, well, this is how we do life. Everything is on and on. And if you noticed, one is we were exhausted a lot. Two, we were spending so much time wide open that there wasn't like everything, everything was coming in. And it was actually hard to, to have a new uh, stimulus, a new, oh, that's exciting. Like we were just in this constant state of arousal, if you will, or excitement. And when we're wide open like that, you know, everything can get in. People's bad moods, um, everybody else's anxiety, you know, because we're out here you know, we're wide open, our energy field is actually even bigger. And we're not so buffered, we're not, um, we're not allowing ourselves to do this. And so everything gets in, like I said, people's bad moods, um, world anxiety, world stress, um, those of us who are really, uh, 
empaths, you know, we feel everything all the time. And so learning to allow a little bit more control or regulation of your heart protector, regardless of how sensitive you are, is super important. Because here's the truth, we're all empathic, we're all intuitive, we're all sensitive. But when you go through life wide open, full throttle, totally on, sometimes you don't realize that you're just plowing through life. So now as we're in this, uh, as we're out of our chrysalis, out of our little nest that we've been creating or been self-imposed, whether it was totally pleasurable or not, you know, we still had a kind of heart protector reset. And now, you know, it's not only are we learning to go through life with masks on or masks off, right? But we're also learning to, you know, probably over the past year, year and a half, we've, we've kind of closed down a lot, yearning, yearning, yearning to connect with people, but not really quite sure. And so our heart protector has been doing more of this dance. And what we need to do now is to give our heart protector a little space to allow our heart protector to have the opportunity to open up a little and trust in the situation and then close at will. Like in, in acupuncture theory, you want to have a full range of all your experiences. So you don't want to go through life wide open or totally shut down. You want to have this every feeling in between. And so this opportunity of allowing a little growth spurt for your heart protector is also the opportunity of learning to come in out of your head, learning to come into your body, trusting in your innate wisdom and heart guidance, and not looking outside yourself for the answers, but learning to trust your heart's yes, so that you can live a heart-centered life. You can know when you want to go open or close or flutter or go, well, uh, I don't know, open, close, open, close. But the only way that you're going to learn to trust yourself is to come back into your body, coming back into your body, into your heart following your intuition, your internal guru, if you will, and your heart's yes. How's that feel for you? There are a thousand, there's hundreds of different ways, probably thousands of different ways to get out of your head and into your heart. Um, the way that I offer that is through a series of programs that start with your heart's yes, move over to shine in, then learning really incredible practical tools so that you can follow your heart cent follow and live a heart centered life, crescendoing into uh, my flagship program called Deep Happiness. This whole progression of programs is based on 30 years of doing acupuncture with people, 30 years of holding space for people to be their brightest, best selves. And the whole reason I have actually moved into an online program setting, facilitation, it is because I wanted to allow these gifts, these tools, these lessons, if you will, out to a bigger audience. Because I haven't connected with you and you and you and all of you else who are on the call. I haven't had and probably won't have the opportunity to meet you in person in my treatment room. 
But what I can do is absolutely offer you the tools so that you can live a life that is heart-centered and filled with deep happiness. So I would love to know from you, like, what is, how do you follow your heart? How is it that you follow your intuition and heart? Go ahead and put that in the comments. I would love to know how you do it. I'm curious. You know, we all do it in so many different ways. If you'd like to join me, go ahead and look at our website. There are all the programs are set up right there. And yeah, remember this. You have every right to allow your heart to open and close to however you feel is right. Not what you think is right, but what you feel is right. And that is how you live a heart-centered life, by following your heart's yes. Yeah. So thanks for watching. Again, share any comments or thoughts that you have. Um, reach out. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to connect with you. All right, enjoy this beautiful day. Bye-bye.